So in this video, we will take a look into a very interesting approach that Atlassian took to do cache and validation. And they leverage SQS and SNS combination to do that. It's pretty uncommon. And we'll see what they did, why they did, and when they changed, what they changed, and how they changed. Right? It's pretty interesting. It's a pretty uh, interesting deep dive that we'll do today. So let's get started. You would have heard this very famous quote that uh, there are two hard things in computer science. The first one is naming things, variables, functions, and whatnot. And second one is cache and validation. And this entire video is all about cache and validation and how Watlashian did it. Now consider this, that um, a pretty standard way for people to use a cache is they have a source of truth, kind of MySQL, Postgres of the world, right? and they have a cache your Redis, DiceDB, etc, etc, etc. Now, the whole idea of cache validation is whenever the data changes in the source of truth, how do you invalidate the cache? That's the whole thing. So that you don't serve stale data for a longer duration. That's why you need to invalidate the cache. And that is what the entire discussion is going to be. How and why are you trying to or are you trying to invalidate the cache? Now, this entire thing is in the context of a service at Atlassian called Tenant Context Service. Right? We'll take a long time. The diagram looks scary. It's not. It's not. It's pretty simple. I'll explain it step by step. Right? So this thing is a Tenant Context Service, which has its own source of truth, which is DynamoDB. It has some sort of ingestion. We don't need to worry about the internal details of it, right? It has some sort of ingestion workers which are doing writes into this DynamoDB, right? Consider this TCS API, the Tenant Context Service API, that whoever wants to know about the tenant metadata talks to this API. API server goes to the database, reads the data, serves it, right? So whoever wants to consume the TCS data, this is the flow, right? Okay. Now, the core idea or the core pain point of cache and validation happens when your ingestion workers are doing writes onto the DynamoDB. The source of truth has changed and this change needs to be percolated to the clients of TCS service. Now, what are this client? Now, this entire blue block, blue box that you see is one client of TCS. There will be multiple such clients. Now, each client is a consumer of TCS. So the client would have its own set of customers, this one, and some application who is using TCS data. And this TCS data is typically now consider this as a one pod or one server in which you have a sidecar and your main application. Sidecar is the one that is inter interacting with the TCS API to get the data. Right? Your server directly talks to sidecar to access the data quickly. So this way, your app, the customer, the client of TCS service, this one, the HTTP API, the web server of it, can focus on serving its request that it's wanting to. And the sidecar is doing the grunt work of, let's say, fetching the metadata from the TCS API and this and that and whatnot, right? So this is how they are leveraging the sidecar pattern. Right? And the sidecar is responsible for querying the data over here and caching it over here and whatnot. So the data is cached on each sidecar. It's not a centralized cache. The data is cached on the sidecar. This is the HTTP API server that is serving the request. Right? Now, this is their flow. Now, where does cache invalidation come in? So when the write happens to the database, now, the ingestion worker sends an invalidation request to an SNS topic. Okay. This SNS topic is subscribed by multiple SQS servers. Each SQS server is consumed by one pod. So, one pod, one SQS. And SNS is taking care of broadcast. And SQS is getting this invalidation event. Sidecar is consuming the message from SQS and invalidating its local cache. I'll repeat this entire flow once again. When ingestion worker updates the database, updates the source of truth, it sends an invalidation message to SNS. SNS fans out to all the SQS that have subscribed to it. One SQS is 
for one pod the sidecar of the pod consumes a message from sqs it's an invalidation message and invalidates the local copy of data this way when the subsequent request comes in for the key which is let's say it's invalid which means it's not there in the cache or whatever has happened your sidecar will go to tss api it will go to the server get the data cache it again and continue its processing this is the flow very obvious extremely obvious you can start seeing the problem with this that this approach is not scalable so first thing first you need one sns topic per client of tcs so the more the number of clients of tcs if there are n clients each client would require one sns topic right that's one second you require one sqs queue per compute node per pod per ec2 server that in itself sounds very weird right then why would you need to have one sqs for each ec2 server <laughs> right that's that's the fun part right people start building it in first place and then they realize that at scale things don't work which is perfectly fine and that's how we all learn right from this mystic right? quote unquote mistakes right okay so one sqs per compute node right now imagine when an invalidation happens Right. This invalidation message is also an event, so some payload that you need to invalidate this thing. Da, da, da. Now, this message sent once to this SNS. What if for this same key, there would be multiple SNS topics that are interested in that? So, imagine there are M SNS topic to which the invalidation message is sent. And each SNS topic has, let's say, N on an average, on an average SQS subscribed to it. Right? So MSNS, each one is sending N SQS messages. So M into N is the total fan out that happens, which is humongous. It's unnecessary cost that you are bearing because SQS bills you per message. Right? Now imagine the time when there, the writes are more. If the writes are more, the number of invalidation messages are more. The number of invalidation messages are more, which means the fan out, the total number of messages being sent because m cross n is the fan out m is the total number of sns topic each one having n sqs subscriptions m into n is the factor of fan out so every invalidation message is sent m cross n times and during high write throughput or high write load the number of invalidation messages are higher so in that case your sqs starts to throttle the account level throttling that would happen that's the problem so lots of problem let's find a solution <laughs> sorry okay you're thinking hey, easy solution why send one message for every invalidation request let's just uh patch them so first thing first remember this thing uh whenever you see a potential uh batching uh, like a potential to batch stuff always do that that's the lowest hanging fruit that you have and you should leverage it so you instead of sending one invalidation message for every update try to batch the number of invalidation message and then send one message in one shot right? and that reduces your fan out imagine if you just wait for a for one second and let's say you get 10 messages in one second you literally have slashed your total number of messages by a factor of 10 which is pretty awesome right? <coughs> so remember this whenever possible batch the request now batching helps you reduce burst traffic you reduce high fan out as we discussed but what it does is it introduces the delay in processing because now when your ingestion worker is done updating the database it needs to buffer the message over here for some time one second window and then send one message to sns so now sns instead of getting one message for every single request every single invalidation request it's buffering, it's patching, and then getting one request that contains 10 invalidation messages, kind of, right? So you are batching. It's a good solution, but you are still not avoiding one SQS per compute node problem. So batching is slashing your number of messages, all good, but having one SQS queue per compute node seems criminal, to be really honest. So it's tedious, it's complex, it, you will very soon hit AWS account limits and whatnot. So how do we solve it? 
Now here we'll go with the framework of opposites. Push versus pull. So up until now, what we were doing is here if you observe, the data got updated, you push the message to SNS, SNS push the message from SQS, this one pulled from it. So you are proactively pushing the invalidation to be done as soon as possible. Right? So instead of push, can we pull? So with batching, can we pull? So what they did is they re-architected their solution. They are still doing batching because it reduces the number of invalidation messages that needs to be processed. So that's a good thing. Right? So what they do is now when they batch, they put this batch on S3 and the sidecar periodically. So earlier sidecar was listening from uh, listening to SQS and then invalidating its local copy. Now sidecar talks to S3, reads the data message in which it gets all the invalidation messages that needs to be acted upon and then invalidates the local copy of data. So from a push based architecture, we move to a pull based architecture, trying to get a benefit out of it. And this is a revamp that they did. Again, it sounds pretty uh, obscure to think about it. Like why on earth would they do this in the first shot? But that's how they have, that's what their architecture was. And then they solved it. Now, few key takeaways that we understand. And again, these are uh, very, essential when you are starting and your company scales how things work so first thing first your infrastructure cost can escalate very quickly at scale because imagine this uh, the more the client of tc uh, the more the client of tenant contact service happens your fan out of messages is increasing right so although it looks like a pretty simple system to implement but your infra cost can scale very quickly if you do not have things in control that's why Second, this is the most, most critical one. Your naive solution, which you employed or that you deployed on your day zero, works fine, all good. But keep an eye on scalability. Keep an eye that, hey, what would happen when we scale? We typically think it's, if it's working, it's working. I won't take a look at it, right? But is it really the case? Is it really the case? The amount of cost that you are bearing, is it worth it? The amount of time you're taking in processing, is it worth it? So keep in mind to visit your previously deployed service running for a very long time to see if there are any potential improvements that you can do and things are under the managed SLA with respect to cost, performance, durability, all the buzzwords, whatever you'd want to think. And more importantly, be ready to re-architect your solution. Keep an eye on the cost, keep an eye on the convenience, keep an eye on the maintainability and see if you'd want to react. It does not mean you go ahead and re-architect every few months. That's a waste of time. But if there is a need that your cost or convenience or maintainability is going for a toss, you go ahead and be ready to re-architect your solution. So here we saw how we or how Atlassian converted their push-based stuff into pull-based stuff. That's a complete change of access pattern. Right? But was it worth it? Yes, because now that infrastructure is pretty much scalable, you don't need one SQS per compute node and whatnot. That makes your life super easy. And yes, this is all what I wanted to cover today. All the important links, this is taken from an Atlassian blog. This is, uh, you'll find this link in the iCard top or below the description is where you'll find this link. I highly recommend check this out. Apart from this, uh, check out my courses. I conduct highly practical courses on system design, completely no fluff. It's not about drawing boxes, it's about digging deeper into implementation detail, production nuances and all. It's a pretty fun course. I've been doing it for four years. I have a time of my life. Every Saturday, Sunday, I wake up to that and have a lot of brainstorming with a lot of great folks. So if you'd want to learn system design the right way, hop along. The links are in the description. Check that out. And yeah, like always, do like, share and subscribe and spread the word on socials. Be curious. Engineering is beautiful. Uh, dig deeper. Uh, implement whatever you are reading and more importantly, have fun.